So this is going to be a walkthrough of our project, the emotional color wheel and our abstract family um, portrait. So um, there's a video that I'm going to link here um, and will be in the description um, that will be the notes and information for this particular unit. Um, I use the art student's workbook um, for notes, uh, but you could certainly take notes on another piece of paper. So around about page 14, it may change in future editions, um, is the emotional value of colors and shapes. And that's where we're taking our notes to be able to do this uh, particular unit. So the premise is that certain shapes um, will have emotional values attached to them. So triangles tend to be the most aggressive because they're sharp. Circles tend to be playful uh, because they're soft. And squares tend to be very strong, um, like building materials, but they're also kind of boring because they're, they don't move. And then we have our color associations that we go through uh, in, those, in the video and in our notes. How red is associated with blood, so that's the anger. Orange is uh, an aggressive color because it might remind you of a stove burner. Yellow is associated with the sun, so it's happiness. Green is associated with grass or nature. So it's uh, positive but slow growing. Blue associated with water in the sky. So it's vast um, and calm. Purple is the most quiet of the colors. Black is the color of mystery and the unknown, but it's also like a punctuation mark on color. Brown is associated with uh, farming. So it's uh, lots of potential. So it's not, we don't consider it a dirty color. It's a hardworking sort of color. And white is associated with spirituality. Um, but the notes will be more complex when you, you know, get into that part of it. Then we have to look at what shape would represent yourself. So this is a combination of some sharp shapes uh, representing an aggressive side. The square is representing somebody who's very dependable and hardworking, and the circular represents the sense of humor. Here, then it's asked to color it in after you've taken, you know, all of these notes. And the orange shows that it's aggressive, but there's no red in there, so it's not like deadly. It's just aggressive. Yellow is for happiness. Purple is for calm. Then a little bit of a yellow spike down here to show kind of an aggressiveness. If I was thinking of a sport, that might be more like uh, baseball moving into football. You know, it's aggressive, but pain is not sort of the, uh, the, the point of it. Then we turn the page again, and we start to come up with a list of family members and some words to describe them. So mom, loving, caring, uh, easy to talk to, a little impatient. So we've got circular things representing the loving and caring part. The impatience is maybe with the brown with a little bit of a spike. Uh, and the blue is kind of representing the easy to talk to, that calm sort of thing. We have dad, funny, uh, good at cheering people up and can get irritated fast. So again, we've got colors of purple for calm, brown for hardworking, orange for aggressive, and black for mystery. Maybe you don't know where that aggressive is coming from. Or, you know, someone who can get set off really fast. You're like, whoa, what happened? You know, black can be a color for that. Uh, a sister, uh, sweet and crazy, funny, smart, annoying. Um, so we've got some spikes in there in the yellow. So it's not uh, a painful aggression. It's just an annoying aggression. Uh, a little bit of red for anger and blue for calm. Uh, brother one uh, knows uh, when and what to say, uh, gets mad a lot, uh, loud but calm. So we've got blue to purple and orange is kind of representing that loud and a little bit of aggressive on the tip. Brother two, uh, funny, strong, big, obnoxious, and annoying. So it's a bigger shape. Um, we've got green for the calm, purple for the quiet, and red for the aggressive side. Uh, grandma, sweet, loving, kind, positive. So we've got a very rounded sort of shape here with yellows and blues and greens, so very nurturing sorts of colors. Grandpa, smart, skillful, talented, hardworking, and loving. So again, no sharp angles in this. Uh, brown for the hardworking going all the way around. Positive colors like yellow, purple for calm, and blue for quiet. And then me is represented on the other side for the student, so we've already got that. doesn't have to be redrawn. So now we have to take this and organize this into a composition. So um, the way I tell my students to do it is put the, the shapes together that are most close in the family, that get along the most. Uh, and then you can push shapes off to the corners that are kind of isolated or they isolate themselves or kind of they're on the outside of the crowd. Um, so this was the organization that I created.
<clears throat> and we can see that um, the mother and father shapes are right in the middle and they're overlapping a little bit to kind of represent that relationship. The grandparents are overlapping a little bit to represent that relationship. If there was a divorce, you might want to have a separation or maybe even put them on opposite sides of the paper depending on how that went. And then I need to think about where I'm going to place the other people, like who is closest to grandma and grandpa and who is closer to the parents. What children are closest to each other in relationship and maybe which ones are not getting along. So how you place the shapes can tell us a little bit more about what's going on in that relationship. And then we need to think about the spaces in between. How are we going to show that they're kind of close and positive whereas maybe over here there's some negative energy kind of going on in there. Well, we could do patterns or colors in between these two to represent that negative energy, maybe some oranges. Uh, if there was some you know, physical altercation, you could put in some red. Uh, these two are a little bit more close, so how would you show that they're closely connected? You could do a chain link connecting them together, though that might be too tight of a bond. Um, you could have circle bubbles kind of in between representing kind of a humorous relationship between the two or again the color between them um, you know if it's a parent and a child maybe green to show growth uh, and nurturing yellow uh, to be sort of supportive. So these are all the things that you need to think about as you work on this particular project. Now we're going to color this one in using um, watercolors and we're going to use a few different techniques here uh, to kind of help you out and give you some choices. So in the packets I gave students for at-home learning, uh, you have primary colors plus um, some other ones to kind of help you out. So I've got some primary colors here in watercolor sets. So we're going to um, open our workbooks and make sure we have our reference pages open so that what you have in your sketch is coordinating with what it is that you're doing um, as your work. Now sometimes we would outline these with pen and sometimes you don't have to. With watercolors, pen and watercolor tends to look really nice together, but sometimes the black line makes a separation that you don't necessarily want. The nice thing with watercolors is you can decide to do that at the end, uh, but the only issue you're going to have is this carbon may affect your watercolors. So yellow plus the black of the carbon can turn things a little bit green. So you want to make sure that your lines are really light. I drew mine dark so that the camera could see it, but really when you're working you want it to be as light as possible um, so that it's not going to affect the watercolors. So in this demonstration I'm kind of doing the wrong thing for the right reason. So to use your watercolors it's as simple as activating your colors with a little bit of a puddle of water. And then um, you can mix and match your colors to, uh, to fill in a space. So. I know that this one has uh, yellow kind of going around here. If you want to lighten the color, you can use it intense first, you know, where you will need the color intense. But then you can just simply add some water and move that color around to kind of fade it out if you want to. That's kind of what I've done down here because I need this one to turn into green and if I only have my primary colors with me then I need to overlap two colors there to kind of make that work for me. I also want to have brown down here and the way to make brown with your primary colors is to use all the primary colors in one space. Now I happen to want these colors to fade together so it's okay to work what we call wet on wet because the colors will do something we call bleed. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of uh, blue down here so I can show you how we're going to make brown. And you can see how the color kind of spreads out. That's called bleed. If you don't want bleed to happen then you need to wait until one color is dry before you put another color next to it. But I do want this one to uh, bleed out and fade. And get a little bit more intense down at the end to show the point. All right. And then now to turn it brown, I've got my yellow there, I've got my blue there. Now I need to add my magenta or my red. And this should brown it up a bit. And this is called a chromatic gray. So we don't really call it brown, we just call it chromatic gray. And blend it out. Now if it looks a little too purpley for your eye, 
Um, then the opposite of purple is yellow, so I could add a little bit more yellow, and that might balance it out, or maybe I just do too much, but I'm not too worried about it. We're not looking for perfection in this. We're just looking for getting down the idea, and then you should be able to explain it really well uh, later. All right, so kind of getting a brownie sort of color. And then I wanted this to turn into um, green, so we're going to use our blue again. And it's blue down here, and then where they overlap, it'll start to turn green. Now, if you want something to fade and it's not fading the way you want, you could just add some water to the edge and that will help kind of fade it out and it'll blend. Sometimes you want to have a hard line between colors and sometimes you want it to blend. So if I wanted to color the other shape here, which is the father, I need to wait until the yellow is dry to do that. So does that mean I need to wait, walk away? No, it means you go work on another part. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this um, grandfather shape and I'll fast forward through it so you can see what's going on. I made, uh, I made brown going around by using all three primaries. We had yellow, purple, which is going to be a mix of our uh, red and blue, and then some blue over here to represent uh, the grandfather. So now I'm going to go back in. This part is dry, so now I can paint in the figure that is um, uh, representing the father. All right, so for the father, I needed um, purple, kind of a brown, so I've got my three primaries, orange, and then black. Now, black is really hard to do with uh, watercolors because you're just mixing your three primaries but using them intensely. Um, and you can see I have a little bit of, bit of bleed here where that dark area went into the lighter area. So one way to fix this is to wash your brush and then squeeze your brush out over your water container, hopefully. And then it can act like a little bit of a sponge and pull up some of the color. Um, so you could do that as kind of a technique. The other thing too is if you need black in your design, I could have chosen to just color it that little part with a black Sharpie, or you can use a white watercolor marker. So any marker that's water-based, you can do that and you can actually add water to a marker. So I'm going to use markers um, for the next shape so you can kind of see how that can be done as an alternative. So we'll take a look at um, this shape here and give this one a go. So we've got some red up here. Now once you have the colors down there, then you can actually use water, just clean water, and it will kind of blend out your uh, marker so you don't get all those marker streaks in there. And if you wanted to fade between two colors, um, you can just kind of mush over that line. So I'm doing the opposite ends first. This will help lay down the color. Now if I want to blend between these two, I just go ahead and put some water right on that line. And then I can blend back and forth. And that would soften up that edge between the two uh, shapes or two areas of color.
you can see it's it's moderately successful. I mean, watercolors are best at what they do, which is as watercolors. Uh, but you can use other things and be a little experimental with your work. The other thing I have is watercolor pencils. So if you love color pencils, um, and I have set up my students with watercolor pencils, they can use those to color in. So I'm going to attempt this shape. All right, and I'm going to continue this way <clears throat> and finish painting the rest of the shapes. And I may use combinations of color pencils, markers, uh, and watercolor. I am trying to use just my primaries, but I do have a set with lots of other colors. If you have extra watercolors on the side, you're welcome to use them on your own. So now that I have all the shapes down, <clears throat> I need to consider what are the colors that I'm going to put between the shapes or the symbols to kind of represent the relationships. If I'm going to use little textures, like I mentioned doing bubbles between these two, it might be better to do the whole background first and then put bubbles on top of that. Because if I put bubbles and then I try and paint around those bubbles, it's going to be a nightmare. Um, I'm going to still use the same ideas of uh, colors representing emotional values. So I'm going to color that in with that idea. I'm going to get a bigger brush and go ahead and fill in my background and then play with uh, textures and patterns between the shapes. I have this Chinese bamboo brush which is really good for um, doing watercolors and you can do very wide things but you can also use the tip like a razor point uh, to color in. So if it's something you can get a hold of that's kind of a nice little tool to work with. Uh, when you're working with watercolors. So now we're going to look at the spaces between. We've got this kind of light green between these two because there's this growing up happening in here as well, a different kind of green. Um, this figure has a lot of gray around it because people aren't quite sure what's going on there. Why are they so aggressive? But these two get along really well that way. The gray extends over to the grandmother because she does have this orange and people don't understand why she has that kind of side to her. Um, but then I can play around with that idea of like, you know, bubbles between the two. Um, maybe blue bubbles are kind of fun and happy, so we can kind of put them around there. Uh, and then I can think about other little cues that I can put between shapes to represent how they're getting along. Now I'm just choosing to do bubbles here. I could have done like ribbons of color. Um, I could do like a fog of color in between, but I just decided you know, yeah, like that, it kind of shows that there's some humor and connection between these two figures. Um, maybe between these two figures, there's a connection, but people don't quite understand what it is. And maybe they get along with each other's kind of dark side. So um, because it's mystery and it's kind of like uh, potentially aggressive, maybe we'll use some zigzaggy lines to kind of represent that connection. And I can still fade that out so that it's not too obvious what's going on and fading it kind of gives this sense of ambiguity perhaps. So just put some clear water next to it and let it fade out into space. Um, and I think that adds a nice kind of 
element to what's going on. And you should be able to explain your choices later on. And you can see how that gray kind of fades out. And I think it, you know, looks kind of interesting there. Um, you know, these are already overlapping, so you don't need to do much there. But if you wanted to show some kind of connection, that would be fine. Um, these are grandparents and parents, so maybe, you know, I want to put some, you know, green between. So it's this side of the family that's sort of connected. So I can just have like a ribbon of color kind of connecting here. So not only is it blue and positive and kind of chill, uh, but now I have some green to show um, that there's a parent-child relationship. But it's a nice dark green, so it's more of a mature thing as opposed to a childhood thing. And I can use some just clear water to fade that out so it isn't too obvious. And then if I wanted to, I could go back and, you know, put in a few little dots of uh, color to kind of represent that, you know, in the fog. And it also keeps it from looking boring. You know, if I just have one thing between each one, it may end up being a little bit boring. So I'll finish that up and then we need to look at it and decide, do we need pen or do we not? Right, so I've got these leaf kind of shapes between these two because maybe they like gardening together and that, that shape could kind of represent that connection to the others. Uh, here it's positive and happy, so there's kind of this fun givingness going between these two people and we've tried the other ones. Now, when I look at the work, I try to think to myself, does it really need black outlines? When I look at this, it'll work either way. Um, for the most part, I stayed inside the lines, but there are some areas where I didn't. And because my lines are kind of dark, they might be a little distracting to the piece as pencil lines in a watercolor. So actually for my particular piece, I do think that um, black lines would be helpful. So I'm gonna add a finished image to this video at the end. Um, and uh, hopefully you get the idea of how we can work abstractly. Now we can talk about these people on a emotional level and how we're getting along or not getting along. It's also very coded. So I'm not giving everybody else my business. Nobody knows which shape is me except for me and maybe my teacher if I'm sharing that with them. But, um, you know, we don't necessarily need to know why somebody's on the outside. We don't have to tell that story of what happened there. But we know that something you know, is going on in that with our color coding. So you can be very honest with your work and still feel safe in expressing what it is that you're creating here. And this is just one option uh, for doing a family um, self-portrait or a, a family portrait in abstract shapes and colors. This could be done three-dimensionally, creating sculptures for each piece and then creating an arrangement. Or each piece could be done on a piece of foam core and then uh, hung up on a mobile. So there are lots of different ways to kind of interpret it. This happens to be a watercolor interpretation um, that works uh, very well as an abstract work of art.